I, I realized I need at least like 30 minutes and I will try to stick to the 30 minutes, but yeah, that's why it's today as a regular talk. Um, HPAC is an alternative uh, format for Haskell packages. But yeah, be before we start, uh, firstly, <laughs> I think uh, competition is a good thing. Um, experimenting with new ideas is always allowed, or at least I take the freedom to experiment with whatever I want. And I think that's the basis for innovation. Um, so <laughs> um, HPAC, uh, what is it? It's an alternative format for Haskell packages. It's based on YAML. It generates Cabal files, at least for now. <laughs> um, yeah, it can infer module names. I will look, see, it, see that in a minute. Um, it removes redundancy from your Cabal file, like GC options dependencies. Sometimes we want them into multiple sections. We have a library and a test section, and we want, by coincidence, for both sections, um, all warnings, yeah? stuff like that, or a same list of a shared list of dependencies. Uh, it provides some sugar coating. That's not crucial, but it's just, just nice to have. I, I didn't see why not. Um, I will see that for GitHub repositories. And it, that's the mindset I developed it under. It gives you 100, or me, it gives me 100% control. And that's also the main purpose of this, of this project, that uh, it makes my life easier. And, and if it happens to, to make somebody else's life easier, then it would be awesome. But, uh, me first in this case. Um, okay, let's um, let's start with a short um, short uh, example. Basically, let's assume we have a Haskell program, a really simple one um, here in main.hs, right? Uh, just hello world, one line. What would it take to write a cabal file for that project? Um, we're not looking into that, uh, but instead we're looking into um, how we would use HPack to generate the cabal file. We just say, um, X, sorry. sorry. It's just, we'll just say executables. Um, executables are mapping because we can have multiple executables and we'll just call it foo, for example. Um, yeah, that's a YAML mapping or like JSON, basically, right? And then what would you need to specify? Would say main should be main.hs, okay? And that will not work yet um, because uh, yeah, we also need at least one dependency um, base, right? So let's put it here, and um, and that should build. And then we could even run it and it prints hello world. Um, okay, that's a little bit the idea to, to specify as little as, as possible. Um, that would be the corresponding um, cabal file on, on the right side. Um, yeah, we could also specify a library. I would just remove that for now. And a library, we can only have one. This is why it's not a setting. And what we would need is source directories, right? Yeah, I, I prepared that here, right? Um, let's assume we have a source directory that uh, has two Haskell um, source files, foo and bar, and we follow the common convention that in this source files, foo and bar, there will be two modules, foo and bar. And uh, as we follow this, this convention, um, um, HPAC would just um, infer just from what it sees on the file system that we indeed have two uh, modules there, foo and bar, and we'd expose them by default. Of course, that's not always what I want, right? Um, sometimes I may only want to um, expose, sorry, um, one of those, for example, foo, right? And yeah, then, then it would just only infer the, the, the modules that are private to the package. That would be bar in that case, right? Of course, um, yeah, if I had more modules, I, I would just touch. Um, like bus.hs, then would also infer that one, yeah? And I may be in the situation that I say, yeah, but, but uh, instead of uh, specifying the exposed uh, modules, I, I may um, want to specify the other modules, the, the private modules, right? And I could also do that, right? And then it would just um, assume that we want to exp expose foo and bar, and bus would be the other modules, right? It would just 
um, always um, infer the other one, right? Or we could uh, actually specify both, right? For example, let's let's assume for for some weird reason we're in the source repository. We have bus, but but we don't care about it. We don't want any metric. We want 100% control. We just say yeah, um, expose foo bar is private and bus we just just ignore. That's kind of a little bit the the idea. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. It it generates cabal files. I already mentioned that. We have already seen most of it. So basically, I have a package.yaml, or if I have uh, like a directory where I have a package.yaml and I have a source directory where I have a Haskell source file that's called foo, then, and I have um, the following content. Basically, I, have, I just specify this um, source repository in my package.yaml, then it will infer this, or will produce this cabal file, right? And uh, most notably, will infer this module here. And yeah, the same works if I have a couple of modules. It will just assume that I want to expose all of them by default. And if I don't want that default, then I have various ways to, to, to influence that. I could either specify exposed modules, right? Then it would assume the other modules would be private. Or I could do it the other way. I specify the other modules. We already have seen that, right? Or I could um, specify both lists, and then there's no magic happening, right? Then it will just, just um, not and for nothing, okay? Okay, um, removes redundancy. Um, yeah, in general, we can list a couple of things in a cabal file, right? We can list GHC options, we can list dependencies, um, and we can do that um, for the library, for an executable, or for a test suite, right? Um, HPEC allows you to specify list things globally and on a section level in contrast to, uh, or to Cabal. And it will then just assume that, or will just merge these two lists. Yeah, if you have a global one, a top level one, and a section specific one, it will just um, merge the two lists. For example, yeah, if you had a list of dependencies here, foo or base and directory and file path, right? That would be a global one. And now, if you had another section here, for example, let's say we have tests, yeah? Tests um, are a mapping tool. We can have multiple test suites. Let's assume we have a test suite called mapping here. And again, for a test suite, we basically need to specify an entry point and a source repository. Right. Then again, it would infer the modules that we have by coincidence in that um, that um, source repository and, and the list of dependencies that we specified here top level would now be shared. We see that here would be shared between the library section, right? And um, yeah, the, the test suite section, basically. Yeah. And I could, of course, yeah, what, what, what is common for test suites um, is to have additional dependencies. For example, I could have HBAC as a dependency here that we would just let's make this a little bit smaller. Um, yeah, then basically this, this top level list of dependencies would have shared between the two sections, the library and the test suite section, and here we had one additional uh, dependency. Could, could of course be a list like, yeah. Is there an option to enumerate non-Haskell dependencies, like OpenGL? Um, currently not. Uh, we'll see that later. Like current state is just I add what what we need, and I'm also happy to like if I write C bindings, I would maybe resort to Cabal or extend X H pack, right? Um, so far, far I haven't had the use case yet, right? Is there like an escape hatch in Cabal? So can you like use H pack to No, it's it's not. Um, yeah, as I say, um, it tries to solve the common use cases so far. Um, we, we, I could think about it, uh, like adding something like that, but um, I'm not sure. I would, I myself, I'm not afraid to use Cabal if I do something more exotic. So um, that could also be an option. Just the other thing is there an option to automatically bind dependency numbers or automatically infer dependencies? I will also talk about that in a second. Okay, so. Um, Basically, at the end of the talk, um, 
uh, well, we'll, we'll go back there and like, talk about that quickly. OK, I already had that, right? If you have a list of dependencies here, um, specified top level, it will be effective for all the sections. And the sections could also specify their own list of dependencies, save for GHC options. We only have one top level here. It would be effective for all the sections. But we could also have section-specific GHC options. Right? Um, I can do the same thing for source tiers. For example, here I have an executable, right? And I have a test suite. And very likely, I want to test the code that I wrote for my executable, right? My, the modules that I have to use for my executable, right? So then I can just say globally, top level, I say source is a source repository. That will be used for the executable section then too. The executable section, in addition, has a driver directory where there's the main driver. And the test suite will have an additional source directory um, test. Yeah, so both of the sections would have two source directories, right? So I guess that makes sense. OK. Um, yeah, so, uh, sugar coating. Um, as I mentioned before, I provide some sugar coating um, currently for GitHub um, URLs. So it's, of course, a common thing that um, But uh, this uh, is not, yeah, you could do that. Um, but um, I mean, HP currently is not tied to Git. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, but maybe to cheat. also infer which kind of source control you use, given in which direction uh, you are. That's true. I mean, it's maybe an interesting idea. Right? I'm not sure yet. I would probably think about it. That's true. <laughs> you always change origin. So if you want to fix your change code on GitHub in your own port, then you change the origin. But yeah, in this case, probably. On the other hand, it would be like more true if you distribute the package after changes. And it would be package that will be a change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it also a little bit depends if you assume that you always generate a cabal file and um, distribute the package um, with this generated cabal file, you could do a little bit more, right? If you assume that you distribute it with this hpack or this package.yaml file and uh, let the people generate the cabal file themselves, right? Then, um, yeah, it really depends what, what you would have in mind, yeah. Um, but look, let's look at that. Um, if I specify, like, as a GitHub repository, this username and repository name, obviously, could also be our organization here, of course. And it would just infer this source repository from that. And in addition, it would also add a home page and a bug reports URL. Um, just would assume that the home page is the GitHub readme, and the bug reports URL would be the issue tracker on GitHub, because I think that's the same defaults. But uh, of course, again, um, um, I may not want that. I may want to specify my own home page. And of course, that is also possible. And same for bug reports. I could just specify an email, for example. Or I may just choose that for this project, I, I'm not interested in bug reports. And I could just null it out, basically. If I set it to null, then it would just um, not be generated. Um, again, that's the mindset, basically. It assumes some same defaults. It does a little bit, you could call it metric, but at least it's metric that you can control and that may be a kind of metric that at least I want, you know? Um, yeah, I think we already covered that. So I can either like go with defaults or like specify my own homepage, own bug reports URL. Um, it also does something at inverse package names and it's a little bit more controversial. Um, but if I want an executable, just I just want to compile and I don't care, you know, then uh, I can just, um, as we did in the beginning, I can just um, specify an executable, right? And if that, uh, like the package.yaml, is in a directory called foo, then it would just assume as a package name foo, okay? It was also assumed because Cabal needs a version, it would just assume that the version is 0 .0 .0. Of course, I, I mean, of course, I can specify um, a different version here, right? As, as we would expect um, here. Um, 
Yeah. So um, I call this a little bit controversial. Why is this controversial? Um, because, for example, if I have this under a revision control and the package.yaml is uh, top level, then of course a user could check out this repository under arbitrary names. Right? Um, yeah, so I'm not I'm not too excited, but I mean it's really useful um, for like getting things quickly. But I may make this a warning or or may even drop that in the future. I'm not not sure yet. I mean, it's certainly nice to have like Rails defaults for everything that is reasonable, and then you just enter one value and try to already build a couple of types. So that that's a great idea. Yes, I mean. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of, I mean, the only thing with this name, currently everything can be under revision control, which is used to generate a cabal file, except for the name. So this is why the name is a little bit special. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, things that we haven't covered so far. Um, let me quickly, okay. Um, yeah, it also infers license file. It's just the thing, you know, if it happens to be that I have a file here that's called license, then uh, it will just assume that's the license file, right? Uh, and of course, we can also specify license here. So usually we want that in combination. No, HPEC won't do that. Um, I, I would also like a tool that generates more things, but HPEC doesn't do that, at least not yet. Yeah. Huh? That the null value could be used for anything. Um, like, I should add that for license. Currently, license doesn't support it. And yeah, license should also be, it should be possible to set it to null. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, if currently it's, it's not. Well, you need a package name. So, <laughs> um, um, so, so it has to infer one. <laughs> Yeah, null is uh, treated special as passed as null or in YAML. I was asking, like, what if I want, if I want to have a package that, that's called null? Okay, no, okay, for, okay, okay. I, I, didn't go, I got that wrong. No, uh, firstly, it doesn't make sense to null out the package name. And yes, you can have, okay. oh, can you? We should try. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can quote it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, then, then it works. If you quote it, then, then it works. Yeah, I guess you have to quote it. Yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, um, let's continue here. Um, it supports most of, um, yeah, like the ca uh, cabal um, fields, like category, synopsis, description. Um, and it warrants on unknown fields. I mean, I think it's also important, like, uh, of course, YAML is like kind of free form uh, format, but that doesn't mean that we like uh, lose any sanity. Or if I say here foo equals uh, is bar, you know, I would just say, let's do that again, right? Um, ignoring unknown, it's a warning only, but uh, yeah, it will say, say that. We could add a strict mode to make it an error. And yeah, we're almost through. Project status. Um, documentation is a little bit lacking, um, but the readme contains links to examples. I think it's pretty straightforward. Of course, there should be a manual, but currently there's not. Um, it's not feature complete. Um, this means like I add features as I need them. And I'm also, I mentioned that before, I'm completely fine. Like if something's not supported, like if I do something exotic and for some reason I think it's a bad idea to add that to HPEC, then I would just use Cabal for that. For example, I'm not sure if I would add flags. Yeah, they're useful in some situations, but I, I, I try to go without flags. No. The only thing, like it looks at a cabal file just to try to make a small diff, just because I want that, you know. Uh, if, I, if I have a project that has a cabal file, I add an HPEC file, and I want a minimal diff, basically. But there's no, there's no tool that would do the other way around. Of course, I, from my perspective, it should also be a separate tool, you know, if I want that. Like Sync has suggested that a couple of times. That would be cool, of course, uh, to have a tool that t looks at a cabal file and generates an HPEC 
like a package.yaml. But I think it could be a separate tool. could be in the same project. Uh, I would love to have it, but I haven't written it. Uh, um, Is there a way to annotate a line in a Cabal file to say, don't include this in the div, so don't erase this? If I regenerate the thing with HPAC, don't take this special C option line out. Um, no, it would always generate the whole file. It would Is there a way to annotate the Cabal file so that it wouldn't overwrite? No, it's, um, uh, currently it's not. <laughs> no. It could be. Yeah, yeah it's a, I think I would prefer that, that one because then you still had everything in one file and you could do everything. That could be a quite useful feature. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, you could do it on a section level. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You could then have a top level and on a section level. Maybe that's not so bad. <laughs> could, could be interesting to do that, yeah. Yeah, I think... Yeah, it would make sense to have something in Cabal, uh, like have a way to do everything that's allowed in Cabal, even if it's not supported by HPEC, but I think I like that idea, yeah. Um, but yeah, again, uh, for now, I'm also not, not afraid to, to just use Cabal if it's not supported. Um, that's the thing you, you were asking before, uh, Mikael. Um, like, um, what it, you were asking what it infers dependencies? Yeah, and so currently it just um, infers only things that you could, except for the package name, that you could put under revision control. That's kind of the mindset. So um, for that reason... The cool thing is that you start, what you've shown is that it's basically very easy to start a project. Uh -huh. And the most common thing is that you already have some packages on your system. If you not, don't, then you start installing them, but you have a lot of them. And you start programming, you know the library, uh, you don't want to repeat yourself by telling uh, from which library it comes because they usually come mm. from only one library. Yeah, so yeah, I, I see. I see this problem. I, I, I mean, I see this problem. I, I think there should be a better solution. I hate hate it um, to update this manually. Um, I would love to have some tool that automates that. Uh, I just, I just don't know yet or yeah, how exactly we'll do it. But they, they are not integrated with the backend system. So uh, what I could HS imagine... Import and HS import include, I think. I can send you links. Okay, and that will give me a list of <coughs> packages just, or... Yeah, it basically, first, I think it first the imports, actually, import commands in the beginning. Okay. Because it's used for JIFs. Okay. And then it, it also infers the packages. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I could imagine that it could make sense to, like, have a tool that can put that into Cabal files or package.yaml files, right? Maybe that, but you still want to have this under revision control, so it needs to, needs to be in the file, I guess, in some file. Uh, at, at least I would assume. I'm not sure. The question, so, uh, I would say it's like configure. So you keep configure as a, it's usually produced from some other file. Okay. Uh, for the, the okay, so if we, so you really want to generate it each okay. time when the uh. So the assumption would be I look at, not at uh, like the package that I have on my system, but I have some global package index, like from Hackage or... So if you are building the, 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 the package first time, mm -hmm. then you want to have these versions and these packages in the, your Cabal file. Okay. But if you are building uh, it on developer machine and you are expanding the package, changing it, then it's installed on your machine, yeah, in this case. So there are like two use cases. You can always say, first run, I just add the advisory list of, of packages that I used previously, and I use the same list next time. But first time you start with no knowledge besides the knowledge of what is in the GHC as binary packages installed or okay. in your package database. If the gem files does work more now, maybe yeah. Yeah. But you would still specify the dependencies. Uh, like in, in gem files, you spe still specify the whole list of dependencies, and then you just lock the versions. That's the gem. So and all the transitive the dependencies, of course. The easiest way to, to, to make yeah. sure that you automatically do as much as possible would be not to specify them, to try to infer them from environment, okay. and then you to remember them in advisory list, which is gem, gem, gem log. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So when you've seen mm. the problem, mm. you already fix on the same solution and unless the user mm. tries to mm. fix a different package. Mm. And then you keep this lock under version control even though you know that it's automatically generated. Yeah. I mean, um, like, I, I, I think we, like, at least I want to lock dependencies. Um, and then, the, but then there's this other thing that I also. It, it remembers it. Mm. It remembers this advisory list. Mm. You just need to add this advisory list to the version control. Mm. But you can generate it also from scratch when the dependency has not been seen yet. But with, with advisory list, you mean a list of just packages without versions? Package that you used in previous runs. Okay. With versions? Yeah. Okay. Always with versions. Just one log file. Um, yes, I, I mean, I, I, wa I want, I want your log files. I want better support for log files, but yeah, HPEC doesn't do anything there yet. But l let's discuss this further later, maybe. Yeah, um, I mean, currently the, the assumption is basically it would never infer anything from your local system, also not from the internet. Um, for that reason, currently the mindset is there would not be a config file. That's, you could, of course, have a config file where you specify the author and stuff, you know, because that's always me. But currently it says, yeah, everything that it uses to generate the Cabal file would be in the repository so that everybody can go there and regenerate it right, on any system. Yeah, and uh, I use it every day. Um, I would not want to, to, to be without it. Even so, it seems like a small thing, right? It's not a big thing. It's also not, you know, you can't write a paper about it. But I still think it reduces a lot of repetitive tasks for me, at least. And yeah, we use it for all new projects at Salora. Okay. Um, so this is um, this are the slides. So we could still. Um, Okay. And possibly you can snatch some ideas from the other projects. So there is Kazoo Hub, which actually concentrates more on tricky things like reinstalling, making sure that the documentation always follows the compiled code. Uh, Nails, uh, which mostly focuses on building and uploading it. Uh -huh. uh, the funny part, the Neil tool is called Neil. It's pretty easy to find. Okay. There is also stack, but it's just a yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw that, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, that would be from my side. Um, um, are there still any questions? I, mean, I have a comment. Yeah? I mean, as I'm using this tool uh, also on a daily basis, one thing that I, I wasn't even aware of before is that if you add a new spec file here, it has to be then you usually forget to specify that as a module in the test suite of Cabal file. And then when you do Cabal S list, it won't be included in the tarball. And as soon as I download the tarball and install it, it just won't execute these tests. So if you use HPEG, then there's this fortunate moment where you think like, oh, there's a diff in my Cabal file. Ah, yeah, I actually want that test uh, file to be added. Of course, this um, situation is a little bit specific to HSpec because uh, a, uh, yeah, HSpec, um, as it does automatic test discovery, it will just always generate a main driver that includes the test files that are there. So this is actually a good case. In that case, uh, or good, not sure. But then if some test file is missing, then it would just, because it's not specified in the Cabal file, then uh, it would just not be executed. If you with an executable or a, or a test suite section, if you don't have this automatic discovery feature and forget it, then Cabal won't complain. You can just package it, upload it to Hackage, and then on install time, it will just fail because the module is actually missing. Yeah. Um, so. Embarrassingly enough, I think I, I've been victim of my packages were victims of the same problem. Yeah. I, I didn't realize there was a problem before. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, that's a common common thing, you're right? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's we, we I think we see that a lot in in, in Travis dot Travis files, right? Um, that we do a carbal s dist and then do a carbal install on that um, generated tarball for that reason. Yeah, that makes sense. But if you have a tool that just, if, at least for me, uh, if I have a tool that just infers it, then the better, right? Then I don't, e it won't even fail. Because even if I have a failing build on Travis, it takes my time, kind of. That, that, that is the, actually where, where my second, my previous question was coming, that the most frequent failure next to uh, not including a file is probably failing to use proper time of the definition. Even though they are kind of apparently in the source file, so you have to have either install or, or the same identifier that is there. Yeah. Well, it's there you have to test that you can do that if that is a lack of something. Okay. I think we have four talks today. Um, I think this was 30 minutes. So maybe we should just stop here and um, continue discussing later. And, uh